Despite the towering reputation of Egypt's Great Pyramids at Giza, the Americas contain more pyramid structures than the rest of the planet combined. Civilizations like the Olmec, Maya, Aztec, and Inca all built pyramids to house their deities as well as to bury their kings. In many of their great city-states, temple pyramids formed the center of public life and were the site of much holy ritual, including human sacrifice. The best-known Latin American pyramids include the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon at Teotihuacan in central Mexico, the Castillo at Chichen Itza, and the Yucatan, the Great Pyramid in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, and the Pyramid at Cholula. With over 5,000 pyramids in Latin America, we are going off the beaten track to give you everything from the obscure to the awesome, from the unheard of to the famous to discover secret gems and explore Latin America's greatest pyramids. Mesoamerican peoples built pyramids from around 1000 BC up until the time of the Spanish conquest in the early 16th century. The earliest known pyramid stands at La Venta in Tabasco, Mexico. Built by the Olmecs, the first major Mesoamerican civilization, it dates to between 1000 BC and 400 BC. American pyramids were generally built of earth and then faced with stone, typically in a stepped or layered shape topped by a platform or temple structure. In many cases, pyramids in Latin America were rebuilt again and again over already existing structures to glorify the current ruler. Rebuilding the pyramid, it was believed, was a crucial process that renewed the king's relationship with the gods. At one point, historians concluded that, in contrast with Egyptian pyramids, Pre-Columbian pyramids were not intended as burial chambers but as homes for deities. However, more recent excavations have unearthed evidence that some pyramids did include tombs and there's also evidence that city-states used pyramids for military defense. Zunan Tunich is an ancient Maya archaeological site in western Belize, about 70 miles west of Belize City, in the Cayo district. Zunan Tunich is located atop a ridge above the Mopan River, well within sight of the Guatemala border. It served as a Maya civic ceremonial center in the late and terminal classic periods to the Belize Valley region. At this time when the region was at its peak, nearly 200,000 people lived in Belize. Zunan Tunich's name means sculpture of lady in the Maya language. Mopan and Yucatec combination name Zunan, noble lady, Tunich, stone for sculpture. And like many names given to Maya archaeological sites is a modern name. The ancient name is currently unknown. 
The stone woman refers to the ghost of a woman claimed by several people to inhabit the site, beginning in 1892. She's dressed completely in white and has fire-red glowing eyes. She generally appears in front of El Castillo, ascends the stone stairs, and disappears into a stone wall. The core of the city Zunan Tunic occupies about one square mile, consisting of a series of six plazas surrounded by more than 26 temples and palaces. One of Zunan Tunic's better known structures is the pyramid known as El Castillo. It is the second tallest structure in Belize, after the temple at Caracol, at some 130 feet tall. El Castillo is the axis mundi of the site, or the intersection of the two cardinal lines. The pyramid lays underneath a series of terraces. The fine stucco, or friezes, are located on the final stage. The northern and southern friezes have eroded, and the others were covered during the reconstruction and over time. There is a plaster mold on the eastern wall frieze. The frieze depicts many things. Each section of the frieze is broken up by framing bands of plated cloth or twisted cords, which represent celestial phenomena. The frieze depicts the birth of a god associated with the royal family, gods of creation, as well as the tree of life, which extends from the underworld, the earth, and the heavens. Edna is by far one of Mexico's best-kept secrets. The most remarkable building at the plaza is the main temple. Built on a platform 40 meters high, it provides a wide overview of the surroundings. Another significant building located in the plaza is a ball court. Two parallel structures make up the ball court. The top rooms of the ball court were possibly used to store images of the gods associated with the events, along with items needed for the games. Edzna was already inhabited in 400 BC and it was abandoned circa 1500 AD. During the time of occupation, a government was set up whose power was legitimized by the relationship between governors and the deities. In the late classic period, Edzna was part of the Kalukmul polity. Edzna may have been inhabited as early as 600 BC but it took until 200 AD before it developed into a major city. The word Edzna comes from House of the Itzais. The architectural style of this site shows signs of the Puk style, even though it's far from the Puk Hills site. The decline and eventual abandonment of Edzna still remains a mystery today. Edzna was discovered in 1907. The first organized excavations started in 1958. In 1986, coordinating agencies began to employ Guatemalan refugees in the excavation, restoration, and maintenance at Edzna. Although Edzna doesn't get the same traffic of other phenomenal pyramids, these ruins are insanely spectacular and well worth the epic journey to get there.
Uxmal and Chichen Itza can overshadow the Mayapan ruins, but the ruins are a worthy sight to see. This site will add to your education and understanding of the Maya in general. Mayapan was the last standing civilization before the arrival of the Spanish and holds a wealth of information. Mayapan is often referred to as the last great Maya capital, dating back to the beginning of the Common Era and reaching its golden age in the post-classic period. The city was in operation just before the Spanish conquered the region. The rich history of Mayapan has fueled years of archaeological study starting in the mid-1800s, when Stevens discovered the site. Discovery and study continues today with U.S.-Mexican archaeological teams digging deeper into the history and impact of the region. Mayapan could be considered the most studied Mayan settlement in the region. It's believed that this city once had a population of 12,000 inhabitants within the protected walls of the city center with an additional 5,000 inhabitants living outside the defense walls that surround the settlement. The actual date that Mayapan was settled is under controversy. Some archaeologists believe the city began in 1000 AD under an alliance with Chichen Itza and Uxmal. As Chichen Itza came to its demise, King Kukulkan II of Chichen Itza took over as King of Mayapan and ruled the city between 1263 and 1283 AD in an effort to regain his power in the region. After his death, the aggressive Kukum family obtained power and used Mayapan as a base to conquer northern Yucatan. They succeeded and the Kukum ruled for 250 years, until 1441 to 1461 AD. In 1461 AD, the Zhu family, based in Uxmal, slaughtered the Kukum family and took over the city. Mayapan was a powerful urban center that eventually became the sole political and cultural force in the Yucatan. The social hierarchy is well studied and shows evidence of a high-level ruling class made up of priests and kings, skilled laborers made up of tradesmen and craftsmen, and agricultural slaves that worked the fields around the walled city. Zibel Chautun is a comparatively small Maya archaeological site in the Mexican state of Yucatan, approximately 10 miles north of the state capital, Merida. It's the extreme north of the Maya region, not far from the Gulf of Mexico. The site has been continuously occupied for about 3,000 years up until the arrival of the Spanish and is known to be the longest functioning city of the Mayan world. Archaeologists have studied the city and the area that has been mapped includes over 8,000 structures, though most cannot be seen due to growth of trees and vegetation. It was once a wealthy port and center of Mayan coastal trade and had a peak population of about 20,000, although it declined with the rise of the Chichen Itza. The most famous structure is the Temple of the Seven Dolls, 
so named because of seven small dolls or figurines found inside. The temple was discovered by archaeologists in the 1950s under the ruins of a larger pyramid that was constructed over it. Building temples on top of temples was a widespread practice with the Maya. The dolls were found in the temple but are now housed in the museum. An interesting feature of the temple occurs in the spring and fall equinoxes, the beginning of the planting and harvesting seasons. The doorways were constructed to capture the light of the rising sun in those days. As the sun rises, it's visible directly through one door of the temple and out the other, filling it with sunlight. The site is opened at 5.30 a.m. on those two days so visitors can view the phenomena. The Mayan ruins of Caracol are the most extensive in all of Belize. After a victory over Tikal in the 6th century, Caracol flourished and became one of the largest Mayan cities. After its decline, the city lay hidden in thick, high canopy jungle for centuries until a native logger came across the ruins in 1937. A year later, two archaeologists visited the ruins. They named the site Caracol, Spanish for snail, because of the large number of snail shells they encountered. The ancient Mayan name of the city was Axuitza, or Three Hill Water. Excavations of the ruins did not begin until the 1950s, while most of the work took place since 1985. The excavations have uncovered pyramids, royal tombs, dwellings, monuments, and two ball courts. The earliest habitation of Caracol occurred between 900 BC and 600 BC, while the first Mayan temple, the Temple of the Wooden Linton, dates to about 70 AD. The Caracol royal dynasty was founded in 331 and the city rose in power over the next two centuries. At first, Caracol was an ally of Tikal, as witnessed by the appointment of a new lord over Caracol by Tikal's King Double Bird in 553 AD. The relationship between the former allies turned hostile, however, when Caracol switched alliances from Tikal to Kalakmul. An outraged Double Bird declared war against Caracol and defeated it, but not decisively. In 562, Lord Khan Water, of Caracol, alongside its ally Kalak Mul, planned a war in accordance with astrology against Tikal. Double Bird was captured and sacrificed, and Caracol experienced a boost in wealth and power. At its peak, Caracol maintained a population of over 140,000 people through the creation of an immense agricultural field system and through elaborate city planning. It covered an area much larger than present-day Belize City and may even have exceeded that of Tikal. Vast, mysterious, and enchanting, the ruined city of Palenque is considered to be the most beautifully conceived of all the Mayan cities. Nestled amidst steep and thickly forested hills, its temples and pyramids are frequently shrouded in lacy mists. During its period of cultural fluorescence, the 7th through 10th centuries, 
Palenque was even more beautiful, for then its limestone buildings were coated with white plaster and painted in a rainbow of pastel hues. Mysteriously, the great city was later abandoned and reclaimed by the jungle. Even the Mayan name of the city was lost, and the ruins received their current name from the nearby village of Santo Domingo de Palenque. Unknown until 18th century, this city of Mayan architecture was introduced to the world through the evocative writings and splendid drawings of the explorers Stevens and Catherwood in 1841. While the ruins have received some of the most extensive reconstruction efforts of any Mayan site, only 34 structures have been excavated of an estimated 500 that are scattered around the area. The Temple of the Inscriptions, erected in 692 AD, was a temple, a burial tomb, and a pilgrimage site. Beneath the floor of an inner room, a hidden stairway leads to a funerary crypt 80 feet below. The crypt contained a coffin and a skeleton covered with jade ornaments and other precious jewels. Inscriptions reveal the burial to have been of a priest king, Pakal Votan, who ruled the city from 615 to 683 AD. The 13 corbelled vaults leading to the burial crypt replicated the 13 levels of heaven in Maya cosmology, and the nine stages of the pyramid symbolized the nine levels of the underworld. The ruins of Palenque, like so many other Maya sites, were part of a vast regional sacred geography itself a mirror of the night skies as viewed and understood by the Mayan astronomers. The largest pyramid at Palenque, the Temple of the Inscriptions, was specifically built as the funerary monument for Kenich Janab Pakal. Construction of this monument started in the last decade of his life and was completed by his son. The temple is named for the hieroglyphics found inside, describing the family tree of King Pakal. In 1952, the tomb of King Pakal was discovered deep within the temple. The crypt is closed to the public and much of the tomb has also been moved to Mexico City. Uxmal means thrice built, possibly referring to the multiple layers built on the magician's pyramid. Some scholars also think it comes from the Mayan word Akmal, which means future. Uxmal was the capital city of the Puk region, constructed mostly from 800 to 950 AD. However, the Maya chronicles say that Uxmal was founded around 475 AD to 525 AD by King Tutalzu. The vast construction and expanse of the site supports the idea of gradual construction over the centuries. The place was once a busy Mayan city where 15,000 to 25,000 people lived. Mayans lived here until 1100 AD under the Zhu kings until the Toltecs invaded them. The Maya king was defeated and moved to Mayapan, which was the last capital of the Mayas.
Magician's Pyramid or the Dwarf's Pyramid. This is the tallest structure in Uxmal, standing roughly 120 feet tall. The base is oval shape as opposed to most Mayan buildings which have perpendicular corners. There are stairs angled at 60 degrees on both of the eastern and western sides. On the eastern side, there's an inner temple near the top in the middle of the stairs. On the western side, there are much less number of stairs and a large rectangular temple at the top. This is also called by many other names such as Adivino, Pyramid of the Soothsayer, and so on. The pyramid consists of five temples, the fifth temple being the Magician's Temple on top. Each temple appears to have been built at different times. At the top, the Magician's Temple consists of three rooms and walls show lattice ornamentation. Visitors are not allowed to climb this pyramid anymore. This pyramid was originally nine levels high and has been partially ruined due to nature and man-made damages. A restoration project was carried out by the Mexican government, which was abandoned in the middle. It's no Pyramid of Giza, but you can climb up this pyramid and get a spectacular view of the Uxmal from the top. This pyramid was the religious center for Mayan ceremonies. At the top of the pyramid, there's a temple dedicated to Chak, the rain god. The Grand Pyramid has 72 steps, which denotes an astronomical cycle. Every 72 years, the solstice and equinox sun appears to move backward through the constellations one degree. During the Classic period from AD 250 to 900, Tikal was one of the most powerful Mayan cities and dominated a large part of the Mayan world politically, economically, and militarily. Large plazas surrounded the tall temple pyramids and royal palaces dominated the central area of the site. With a height of up to 70 meters (230 feet), the pyramids in Tikal were among the tallest man-made structures in the Americas until the first skyscrapers appeared in North America. The general decline of the Mayan civilization in the 9th century AD did not spare Tikal, however. The city was abandoned and lay buried under tropical rainforest until it was rediscovered in the 19th century. Serious scientific exploration of the site began in the 1950s, and many restoration projects have been carried out by North American universities in cooperation with Guatemalan institutions. Tikal is now the best understood of all ancient Mayan cities, although many mysteries still remain. Enormous trees still shroud Tikal's buildings, which cluster in groups reached by wide causeways meandering through the tropical forest. Home to toucans, parrots, wild turkeys, howler monkeys, raccoon-like cotamundis, and countless other creatures. Tikal's grand scale even awes those who have visited spectacular Mayan sites such as Palenque in Mexico. The most famous and the most completely restored of all the archaeological sites on the Yucatan Peninsula, Chichen Itza still continues to draw visitors in their thousands. Despite being built by the ancient Mayans somewhere between 9th and 12th centuries, this four-square-mile remnant of Mexico's rich past is still impressive enough to wow even the most cynical of sightseers. Chichen Itza once acted as the capital of the Mayan Empire, comprising of temples, columns, and iconic steppe pyramids. 
At its center, you'll find the Pyramid of Kukul Khan, which stands around 30 meters high and dominates the ancient Mayan skyline. The ancient Mayans were keen stargazers, so they built the temples at Chichen Itza to correspond with the positions of certain stars. Once you see these time temples, it's easy to appreciate just how advanced the civilization was and how their influence is still felt today. They were also expert architects as can be seen during the vernal equinox in March and on the autumn equinox in September. On certain dates in these months, the sun creates the shadowy illusion of a gigantic snake climbing or descending the staircase walls of the Pyramid of Kukul Khan. Chichen Itza's location is believed to have been chosen because of the two large lagoons nearby, which supplied the city with water. However, they also served another purpose. Sinot Sagrado, the larger of the two, doubled as a site of sacrifice. Young women offered up to the Mayan rain god Chak were thrown into the waters and drowned. The Sinot still offers up evidence of its grisly past in the form of jewelry, rings, and the bones of the sacrificed. Despite its grim associations, Sinot Sagrado is a very popular attraction particularly when the heat of the midday sun makes standing out in the open a chore. In all its ragged grandeur, Chichen Itza is one of Mexico's must-see attractions. While you may not be able to climb the 365 steps on the Pyramid of Kukul Khan, there are plenty of passages and buildings to explore, such as the Temple of the Skulls, the ancient spiraling observatory known as the Snail, and the Great Market fascinating for visitors of all ages. Teotihuacan was not, of course, an Aztec city. By the time the Aztec Empire was at its height, this great city had been around for over 1,600 years. We know very little about the founding of the great city of central Mexico. Of the buildings that remain, the oldest seemed to be from about 200 BC, but it seems that it was a city of great power between 150 BC and 750 AD. At this point, it became the sixth largest city in the world after Constantinople, Chang'an, Luoyang, Sisyphon, and Alexandria. It's believed that the population was around 125,000 and up to 200,000. Researchers have speculated that several small settlements may have joined around the lava tube cage over which the Sun Period temple was eventually built. Caves often held important ritual significance to the peoples in the area. This one may be an important shrine because it had four chambers, a symbolic number. What we do know is that the city was brilliantly constructed. Large buildings and small, the wide Central Avenue, and careful organization are a part of what makes the ancient city stand out. The city has been carefully studied, and researchers believe they found at least six distinct social classes in the buildings of Teotihuacan. Though the people of the city left little in the way of writings, they left a lot of architecture. The two pyramids were two of the world's largest man-made structures. The Pyramid of the Sun may be one of the earliest structures in the city. Originally approximately 215 by 215 meters at the base and about 63 meters high, it was enlarged at least twice over the course of history. The archaeological zone of Monte Alban, belonging to the Zapotec culture, is one of the most important in the area of Oaxaca. Its cultural development and monumental architecture has become representative of the region and the Mesoamerican culture area. The pre-Hispanic capital is located at the summit of a hill that rises in the southwest of Oaxaca City. It's located at 1,948 meters above sea level. The pre-Hispanic name of Monte Alban has not been identified with precision. The most closely related descendants of the Zapotecs mention a hill that was known as Dawi Gooch or Dawi Kach, or the Hill of the Sacred Stones. On the other hand, the Mixtecs know it as Yukuchi or Green Hill. At the beginning of the 17th century, this spot came to be known as Monte Alban owing to the fact that, at the time, the lands belonged to a Spaniard with the surname of Monte Alban or Montalban. 
Dr. Alfonso Caso, a Mexican archaeologist, led one of the first explorations and restorations of this archaeological zone. His project, completed in 18 stages, began in 1931 and finished in 1953. Based on studies of the architecture of the buildings, tombs, ceramics, and jewelry, he determined that the history of Monte Alban could be divided into distinct epochs based on social organization, population density, and exchange systems. In this manner, he established five epochs designated as Monte Alban I, II, III, IV, and V. Beginning in the year 500 BC and lasting through 1521, each of these epochs is further subdivided. These epochs represent a total of 14 centuries of continuous occupation, plus six other centuries during which, for some reason, although the site had been abandoned, it remained important to the inhabitants of the Valley of Otsaka. From this, we recognize that the two cultures which made the pre-Hispanic history of Otsaka were the Zapotec and the Mixtec. The most characteristic buildings surround the plaza, the ball court, Temple 2, Temple P, East Palace, and Temple Q, Eastern Side. The ball courts stand out for its integrity and the East Palace for the rooms it contains. Temples G, H, I, and J at the center of the plaza, Building J, considered to be the first astronomical observatory in Mesoamerica, is very characteristic due to the declining of its central axis relative to the other buildings, and for its reliefs designated as De Las Conquitas. The south platform, in the south, stands out because it's monumental and because of its relief at the base, which represents numbers, writings, and people that define chronological scenes and war. System M, the Wall of the Danzants, Building L, Building K, and System 4, Western Side. The Wall of the Danzants contains a series of stelae that, according to reliefs, represent humans whose movement suggests the name. Because of their physical characteristics, they are considered to represent Olmec culture, identified as the oldest in Mesoamerica. Northern Platform, Sunken Patio, Buildings A and B, Bertice Geodesico Building, Northern Side. The northern platform is known for its size and because of the congregation of various platforms. Tomb 104, located at the back of the north platform, is known for its mural paintings, dintels, jambas, and reliefs and clay funeral offerings. Tomb 107, where Dr. Caso found the treasures of Monte Alban, is located on the northeastern part, isolated from the main plaza. The structures around the main plaza are diverse and have been identified as living areas, tombs, and entire communities. The site's museum is located at the entrance of Monte Alban, and there visitors can learn about the other sites to visit inside the archaeological zone. Two adjacent pyramids is the meaning of the name Kalakmul. We are in one of the most important cities of Mayan civilization in area as well as population, since it was once home to over 50,000 inhabitants. The city's timeline goes back to the pre-classic period, that's 300 BC to 250 AD, while its golden age took place in the classic period, when the reign of Khan allied with other states in a confederation known as Cabal. There are records stating that some ceremonial activities were still performed in the post-classic period. Kalakmul became known thanks to biologist Cyrus Lunworth Lundell, who working for a bubblegum company arrived at the site in 1931. It was not until half a century later, in 1982, that large-scale excavations took place under the supervision of William Folan of the Historical and Social Research Center of the Autonomous University of Campeche. The site is located inside the Kalakmul Biosphere Reserve which is over 723,000 hectares and is the largest of five protected natural areas 
of Campeche. These 6,000 structures that comprise the city's bed occupy about 70 square kilometers. The monumental area covers about 2 square kilometers and includes about 1,000 structures. According to recent studies, it appears that Kalakmul was the capital of what is known as the Kingdom of the Serpent or Kingdom of Khan. It was Tikal's main rival and the two kingdoms disputed dominance of the central Mayan area during the Classic period. Due to the importance of the site, UNESCO declared it a World Cultural Heritage of Humanity on July 4, 2002. The territorial space of Kalakmul is spread among five large complexes organized around the central Great Plaza, which is considered as the governing access of its urban distribution. The most important are structures 4 and 8 in the first section, and structures 5 and 2 in the second. The Great Acropolis, an important space in the site, consists of the North Plaza, which includes the Ball Court, structures 14, 8, and the Annex dedicated to ceremonial activities. Structures 15 to 17 are located in the South Plaza, where public acts were performed. The Great Plaza of Kalakmul was the meeting point of political, religious, and social forces of the Kingdom of the Serpent Head. In this urban distribution, the residential areas of the leading classes are quite interesting, such as the Wak Ahau Na residential unit and the Utsial Khan residential unit. The number of rooms in these buildings indicate that they were occupied by large families. One of the unique features of Kalakmul are the stelae that have been found there. 117 have been discovered so far, more than any other Mayan site, which is why this site is so important. All the stelae were built during the Classic period, the oldest ones date to 435 AD. The Uxti tune glyph, three stones, appears at least eight times in the inscriptions related to important people from the city which is how it came to be known Kalakmul. The pre-Columbian archaeological site of El Tajin is located in the Mexican state of Veracruz. The site has great Mesoamerican archaeological significance as it is one of the most thoroughly excavated and the best preserved pre-Hispanic sites from the Classic Era. The paintings and ruins discovered at the archaeological site provide useful information on the daily life of people including their rituals, and society during the time after the decline of Teotihuacan Empire. Although it was previously believed that the pre-Hispanic town was inhabited in three different phases, during 100 BC to 1200 AD, recent research suggests that Al Tajin was occupied only in one phase during 800 to 1200 AD. The El Tajin settlement is contemporary with Mayan settlements like Chichen Itza and Uxmal, as well as settlements on central plateau like Tula and Xochicalo. After 1200 AD, the mighty Mexican Tenochtitlan kingdom took control of the region, causing abandonment and destruction on the site. Characterized by its unusual design, the Pyramid of the Nietzsches, also known as the Temple of the Nietzsches, Pyramid of the Seven Stories and Pyramid of Pampatla is the main attraction of the site. The seven-storied building is built of carefully crafted flagstones, with each of the stories consisting of vertical walls called tableros and sloping base known as taludes. The pyramid has decorative niches capped by triangular extension known as the flying cornice. The large tablets recovered from the pyramid depict a ruler in the form of a deity, involved in different mythological or ritual scenes. The frats called Zikal Koliqui embellish the sites of the staircase leading to the temple. Built by three large flagstone layers, this ball court features an ornamental fresco and six carved panels depicting ritual scenes. The fourth panel at the end depicts scenes related to the ball game ritual. The panels at the center symbolize the gods performing their own ritual or responding to the entreaties of people. Mesoamerican pyramids are in a class of their own, stylistically completely different to Egypt, yet architecturally and conceptually very similar. They are truly coming into the limelight in the past two decades, with more jungle discoveries through aerial photography every year.